let's let's talk a little bit about this right here. Um, does anybody recognize anybody in this picture? I think everybody probably recognizes a few people here, right? Maybe, maybe especially one person, right? We got uh, President Jimmy Carter here. Anybody else recognize anybody else in this picture? Anybody want to raise their hand and call it out? Drop it in the chat box. This picture was taken in 1979. Uh, I'm assuming this picture was taken in the White House. I'm not an expert on the different rooms of the White House, but this is President Jimmy Carter here. And this guy, he's shaking his hand, his, the hand of that is bowing his head right now is Lee Iacocca. Now, if you don't know Lee Iacocca, Lee Iacocca is the guy that invented, he was the visionary behind the Ford Mustang. And after uh, Henry Ford II had a, a very public falling out with Lee, uh, Chrysler hired Lee in the 70s to come over to Chrysler and Lee drew, drove an incredible period of growth for Chrysler. Unfortunately, there was a perfect storm, not unlike the stuff we're dealing with today, just a crazy storm in the automotive industry. And in 1979, Lee went to Congress. He went to the US Congress and he said, guys, I need a billion and a half dollars to save Chrysler. Chrysler's on the brink of bankruptcy. I need a billion and a half dollars. And Congress said, we've never bailed anybody out. We've uh, never done anything like this before. We're not gonna start now. And Lee said to Congress, I understand. You can either, here's your choice. You can either give me a billion and a half dollars today and I can save Chrysler, or you can write a $2 billion check tomorrow when I lay off 360,000 people and Chrysler goes bankrupt. You guys are gonna write a check either way. And the rest is history. Uh, Chrysler in 1979, 1980, uh, this picture was taken, was the first company ever in US history to be bailed out. And of course, you know that since then, dozens, hundreds probably of companies have received government assistance and been bailed out when there's a crisis. Um, the glass ceiling of sorts has been broken on this. And that is not unlike these stay at home orders, uh, these shelter in places, the government mandated shutdowns. I got a couple questions here before we got started about what do I do? Paige asked, what do I do if, if this thing resurges? We're gonna talk about that tonight. This is, this is really, really relevant and really, really important. As I see what you guys are facing right now, the, the greatest risk we face right now is not the quarantine. It's not the stay at home orders. And I know that seems hard to believe, but let me, let me tell you about what I think the greatest risk that we all face is. Uh, it, it's not the quarantine or the stay at home orders, it's what your dental practice is going to look like once you reopen. The, the huge issue that's going to absolutely dwarf this quarantine is that every practice is going to come out of this expecting to be competitive and prosper, yet very few are preparing for how they're going to accomplish that. Uh, Bob Knight, Coach Bob Knight, Indiana legendary Indiana head coach, uh, Olympic basketball coach um, and back in, uh, I want to say 1984, he coached one of the Olympic teams, the gold medal teams that Michael Jordan was on. Everybody, uh, most people have the will to win. Few people have the will to prepare to win. And I think that's very relevant here. It's highly, highly likely that states are going to go into an on again, off again uh, type thing. And when you're open, you're gonna have a period, and that period may be two weeks, it may be two months, uh, it could be a year, depending on your locale and your, your market conditions between these closures, and nobody knows, that's the uncertainty. Uh, I wanna suggest that pent-up demand isn't gonna fill up your schedule, and I'm gonna talk more about pent-up demand here in a few minutes. You've gotta have the strategy in place for your people and your practice and your patients and be communicating that strategy now 
to ensure you've got the continuity and ensure you're going to maximize uh, what's going to happen when things reopen. You, you've got to have a specific and well thought out plan. Otherwise, the hard work you've done so far to survive the quarantine was really pointless. I'll say that again. If you don't have a well thought out plan coming out of this and a, a solid strategy, the suffering and the hard work you've done to survive the quarantine was really pointless. If you're not going to have a great strategy coming out of this, you might as well have closed your doors when the quarantine started and saved yourself a lot of suffering. Uh, the doctors that don't take the time to prepare now are going to suffer later. And I'm going to show you all the stats we have on that from uh, all kinds of different angles here in just a few minutes. Let's talk about the state of the country right now. Got 50 states that are represented here on this graph. And in each state is the date as of yesterday. So if anything's come out since yesterday, uh, disclaimer, I haven't updated this image since yesterday. Uh, but these are when the stay-at-home orders are expiring by state. If it's dark green, that means the stay-at-home order has already lifted, right? If it's a light green, that means there's a definitive date in place from the governor or the legislative body that makes these determinations in your state as to when the state's gonna reopen. And if it's white, which there's only a couple states here that, that are still white, uh, that means there is no date in place. So there's only two states, I believe, uh, that do not have a date set right now when these things are going to lift. I wanna suggest to everybody here tonight that pent-up demand is gonna come in two flavors. There's gonna be two things, there's gonna be two ways that uh, pent-up demand uh, occurs in your practice. The first way is it's just not going to exist. And I'm gonna give you 10 questions to ask yourself uh, in just a few minutes, and you can decide for yourself based on these 10 questions. The second way I think pinup demand is going to exist is when you reopen, you're going to see one to two months. It might only be two weeks of a spike. You're going to have a percentage of patients, depending on your practice and the practice's maturity and a number of factors, you're going to have a percentage of patients that have issues, that have um, uh, emergencies or they want care or they're just uh, really uh, always consistently taking care of their oral health and their low risk. And you're going to have that surge come back and that might be two weeks or two months, but it's not going to be much any longer than that. And then when that surge dries up, you're going to see the lack of pinup demand set into your practice. And I'm going to give you the 10 questions here. We're going to talk about them and I'm going to take I'll probably spend five minutes talking about 10 questions that you're going to have to look in the mirror and think about. I'm not going to answer them for you. It's not my place to answer for your practice. I'm, I'm just here to help you think through these issues and help you to create your strategy as you're going to exit this. The reality is if you do the math, and I've done the math for a lot of our doctors, if you've been closed for two months, if you close March 15th and you plan on reopening May 15th, you need a 15 to 20% increase over January and February's numbers in order to make the same money that you made last year, right? So if you have a 15 to 20% increase over four to six months, you're gonna make the same profit you made last year. Now, there's a bunch of assumptions in that budget formula. Uh, I'm not going to dive into that because I've gone super deep on that for the last three weeks. And if you don't have a budget in your practice yet, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. Um, the doctors that I've talked to about this 15 to 20% increase all think it sounds great, but I don't think a lot of them are giving it serious thought right now and baking that into their plan. The question I'm going to ask you guys tonight is, are you okay making a whole lot less money this year than you did last year? You don't have to answer that. Uh, but I want you to think about that. Your choice, and if you make no choice, then you are making a choice. This isn't a situation where you can sit on the bench and the game doesn't get played. 
The game is being played. The game is in motion. And if you don't make a choice, then in reality, you're choosing to just make whatever money is going to come your way. And for a lot of our doctors, they don't consider that to be an option. Uh, for some doctors, and, and there's no judgment I'm passing on this, but others um, are a lot less forward and a lot less uh, motivated about, about making that happen. And there's ways to make it happen. Uh, and I'm going to show you some of those ways tonight. This is all about having the strategy in place for your people, your practice, and your patients. We're going to talk about that all tonight. As I said a second ago, the greatest risk you face is not the quarantine, but rather, what are you going to do when you reopen? You, you've already weathered probably the worst part of the storm. Now you're going to reopen, and what are you going to do? Not streamlining and creating the efficiencies in your practice. Uh, we saw this in the Great Recession. Those practices that opened back up as if nothing had happened had a significant production decline that took five to eight years to recover. 2008, 2009, when things really crashed, we had a, uh, saw a lot of practices nationwide that didn't really recover until 2014, 2015. And that, that is not normal. If that happened in your practice, that, that was not normal. That may have been the average, but I would bet my house that nobody in here got through dental school with average grades. Everybody in here was probably a top of their class student or did really well. And that's why you're in dentistry. That's why most dentists go into dentistry. They were at the top of their class. Uh, practices that don't streamline their systems right now, uh, there's, there's all kinds of forces that are at work right now. A combination of patient loss, new regulations and PPE requirements, patient financial challenges driven by unemployment, the possibility that dental insurers are gonna lower reimbursements further to recoup these costs. Uh, once reimbursements go down, in, in my experience, and I know I'm younger than some of the names I recognize on this webinar, in, in my lifetime, I've never seen reimbursements go up. Maybe, maybe some of you guys have a different perspective on that, but once reimbursements go down, they don't tend to bounce back. 75% uh, of the dental practices that declined between 2008 and 2012 grew back at a 1% to 2% rate a year. 1% to 2% a year. That's not even keeping up with inflation. Until 2013, 2014, 2015, uh, the majority of the practices that suffered through the Great Recession stayed greatly, greatly depressed. And like I said a second ago, that, that may have been the average, but that was not normal. There was a huge swath of practices that came out of this thing and even prospered during the Great Recession. Uh, and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit tonight, certain niches and industries in dentistry. Um, our data, and I'm gonna show you the data here in a few minutes, shows that practices that completely shut down, and we had some practices, not as many as today, the practices that completely shut down everything in 2008, when their schedules dried up, they had 38% lower revenue for six months longer than those that didn't. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more as we go through tonight. I wanna to talk a little bit about new patient opportunities. We don't generally share, this is kind of proprietary data for us. We don't share this, but uh, I'm making an exception here because I think it's, I think it's exceptionally powerful to give you an idea of the average dentist, you know, we saw the ADA come out and they said that 77% of practices in the US right now are doing less than 5% of their monthly collections. Yet, if you look, we monitor and track every new patient in every practice that we work with. And if you look at this graph of verified new patient opportunities by day since March 1st. Uh, March 1st was even down a little bit from February, but we started this graph March 1st. As a whole, the new patients for Smartbox clients never dropped below 35% of March 1st numbers. 
Now, we had a lot of practices that closed completely. We had a number of practices that went emergencies only and are uh, you know, not set up or for various reasons, um, they are in that bucket. I'm not trying to blow smoke and say, all of our clients are doing great right now. That's not my message at all. My message is that in an economy where 77% of the practices are doing less than 5% of their collections, on average, Smartbox clients are doing 35%. And I think that's an exceptionally significant number to think about as we're moving forward. As I'm talking to you about the strategies and the tactics and the things that we're doing tonight, I want you to weigh that against the results that you see here. I'm not trying to toot my horn. I want you to see that what we're doing is working. And you can choose to take out of this meeting and go execute and implement. Uh, because just sitting on this webinar and watching me tonight is not going to change your trajectory. Uh, these practices that are positioned here are also going to rebound a lot faster as they come out of this. Uh, they're going to be taking a lot of new patients, not only from the market, but for the practices that don't handle this properly, we're in a post-COVID world. 9-11 changed the world uh, for travel and security. COVID-19 is equally going to change the world. And for those practices that don't change with it, the practices that position themselves right are going to, are going to have a, an influx of growth as a result. Uh, so as you can see, not only was 35% the bottom, the last two weeks, this number is ticking up. And we're back to almost 50% of our February high Monday over Monday, which is we track when we're looking at trends, uh, because Monday is the biggest new patient opportunity day of the week, we look at Monday over Monday. Uh, and we're back to 50% of February's high for Monday over Monday trends. Uh, why is this happening? Well, it's because of the strategies that I'm going to tell you about. The Wall Street Journal had a fantastic article that came out. And I would encourage you, if you have a Wall Street Journal subscription, to go look this thing up. If you don't have a Wall Street Journal subscription, shoot me an email and I'll share, uh, I'll share a PDF with you. Uh, I'll show you, I'll, I'll send you a copy of the article. I'm not going to share it tonight. There's 10 exceptionally powerful questions that every dentist around the world needs to be asking themselves right now. They need to ask themselves right now these 10 questions. And as the states and the world starts to open back up, these 10 questions, if you really do some thinking time around them, you will position your practice to win. And I'm going to ask you the questions and then I'm going to give you some of the answers as we go into the presentation a little bit later. Number one, how are you handling the reappointments of cancellations during your closure? And what is your new appointing strategy? Question two, what's your strategy for ensuring patients attend their appointments and refer in this post COVID world? The patient journey has fundamentally changed in your office. And if you don't change your patient journey, your referrals are gonna go down the toilet. Question three, how are you positioning yourself and your practice for maximum case acceptance given the government says we never may never shake hands again? Given there's a lack of rapport and a, a huge shift in how you're gonna interact with your patients. Number four, how are you prioritizing your patients and larger cases and unscheduled treatment so that you can produce that 15 to 20% more for four to six months to close the gap in 2020? Question five, assuming hygiene is gonna take the biggest hit when you reopen, how are you gonna prioritize elective cases to offset hygiene production. And question six, if hygiene is typically your biggest source of restorative and elective treatment, what's your go-to-market strategy to attract those elective cases and restorative directly from the market outside of your hygiene department? 
Question seven, what's your plan to attract more and better patients when you reopen and continue to build and dominate your local market area? Are you waiting for the phone to ring or are you proactive now in building demand to get the phone ringing? Question eight, are you marketing like everybody else when you reopen or have you changed your strategy for this post COVID world? Question nine, what's your cash burn? How closely are you watching your cash burn? If I told you tonight, that this crisis was gonna go on for six months instead of three months, how would that change your outlook on your cash situation? Question number 10, what percentage of your collections was salary in February and January? Who are your A players? And what's your strategy to, to bring your team back or keep your team on board doing it profitably? that last word is the most important. I know a lot of practices that have 35 and 40 and 45% labor as a percentage of collections. And when I say labor, I mean W-2s and 1099s and benefits and associates and everything out the door. And there's going to be a shift. And I'm going to talk about this in a few minutes about A player hiring and compensation. As you're reopening, what do you need to do to create an unfair advantage in your practice versus your competitors? What do you need to do to be changing to adapt to this post COVID world to ensure you thrive when you reopen? Final question, what's the most critical piece of safety and security for your team and your patients? How are you going to get your team and your patients back into the practice? I think if you ask yourself those 10 questions, and I added a couple more on to the end, you're going to be uh, phenomenally positioned when you reopen. If you don't take the time or you assume nothing's going to change, uh, I have a lot of concern for your future. And that's just me. I might be wrong. I've been wrong before. I might be wrong here. Uh, yes, Christine, these 10 will be available. I'll shoot them out after the webinar. I'll shoot these 10 questions out to everybody. Let's talk about some of the biggest issues right now that I'm hearing. Raise your hand if any of these sound familiar. My team doesn't want to come back until they're 100% safe. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Lots of people raising their hand. Emphasis on the 100%. Yeah. Oh, man. Yes. Love it. All kinds of people raising their hand here. This is great. Yes. Everybody. I, I think everybody shares this concern. And many more people have actually had their staff tell them this. And this is, this is real stuff. This is, this is real concerns that people have. How about how many people have a concern tonight that some of your team members may not come back because they're making more money on unemployment and this stimulus package we have right now? Oh, yeah. Lots of people. Yeah. And, and regardless, right, I, I'm not passing judgment. I'm just saying it like I see it. Uh, you got to look out for number one. Uh, if these employees think they can make more money, on unemployment and that's the best path for them, we're gonna talk about that here in a few minutes. But yeah, that's a big concern. Who's got concern about PPE? Getting PPE, what the PPE requirements are, uh, how much it's gonna cost, is insurance gonna reimburse us? How are we gonna mitigate aerosol? All this stuff, yes, all kinds of stuff. Who's concerned about their state dental board? saying you can't open or they're not recommending you open yet. Yeah, I got a few people. Here, let me ask a question not on here. Who was in love with their state dental board before this thing happened, before coronavirus? Raise your hand if you just loved your state dental board before this happened. That's funny, no hands are going up. I've asked that question for the last couple of weeks and I have yet to see anybody raise their hands. Uh, 
it, it, I'll talk about that a little bit tonight. I think it's humorous, but it's, it's not, uh, it's not funny. It's, um, just a kind of a shift in mindset. Who's, who's upset. I've already seen some comments in the chat box that you're not considered essential. How many dentists in here think they're not considered essential? I, I don't, uh, yeah. Who's concerned about this? Not, not what do you think, just who's concerned. I, I think that's the biggest load of crap, but um, I'm going to talk about that a little bit tonight. We're going to skim over very, very high level, very quickly, oral systemic connection stuff. You guys know all this stuff. I, I'm just going to put a bow on this and wrap this topic up tonight. Um, who's concerned their patients may not come back in? Anybody have concerns about their patients coming back in? What their patients are going to do? Yeah. Lots, lots, lots. I think the winner here was the most concerns were around the team members thinking they're making more money on unemployment. That, that seemed to have the most hands raised tonight. I didn't do an official count, but I, I think that's probably the unofficial winner here. Um, I want to give you one tool here that's going to talk to a couple of these points. You guys have seen this in weeks past. Um, we're continuing to evolve and iterate this. Uh, if you're a future client or a current client, we're evolving and iterating this. So every week when you come back, there's going to be more stuff included with this patient security and safety plan. You can go download this letter and I'll send this link out afterwards. Uh, and we've got a whole template and system. You got to hang this thing on your front door. Uh, the patient security letter, you're going to wait in the car. We're going to come get you. You're going to call us when you get there non-patient stay in the car. This is uh, a complete playbook for how you need to run your practice as the social distancing regs are still in place and you start to open back up. Uh, we've got to protect the vulnerable. And this is a best practices for dentist guide along with, uh, we're just giving you the letters, we're giving you all the stuff to go implement this. Uh, also, if you're a client or you have our chat bot, um, our new patient assistant chatbot, we have now built in, as of today, we've built in the COVID-19 pre-appointment screening questions. You know, have you been in contact with anybody? Have you been out of the country? Have you had a fever? Have you had any diarrhea? All those questions we've built into our chatbot uh, so that it can rapidly go through a pre-screening pre questionnaire uh, before those patients get to your office uh, and do it in a way you guys are going to be overwhelmed when your practice opens. We've got to automate some of this stuff. Uh, so in this package here that we're putting together, we've got an enhanced peace of mind letter. We've updated that for this week. Uh, we're recommending that you send letters, brochures, or a postcard to all of your upcoming appointments. Um, texts and emails are great. Put the graphic, the sign on your front door, and give people your playbook right there on the front door. You don't want people wandering into your office asking what they should be doing. Um, add this information everywhere. The marketable attribute of this safety and security plan is the huge benefit. That's what patients are gonna want. They wanna know they're gonna be safe. They wanna know you take their safety seriously. Make sure you communicate it to them. Little things. Here's, I'll give you a couple things out of the playbook. When the patient sits down, you're gonna wipe down the chair before they sit down and they're gonna see it with their own eyes. When the patient gets up out of the chair, you're gonna wipe the chair down again and they're gonna watch you wipe it down. Safety that was once taken for granted is no longer taken for granted. Your patients want to see it with their own two eyes. Um, get your, when you take your instruments out of the autoclave, leave them in the sealed bag. Don't break the seal until the patient's sitting there watching and they see you opening this sterile bag up right in front of them. This, these are some of the things that, that you're gonna need to think about because this is all about reassurance. This is what this is all about. I, the safety, the clinical safety of this is there. I'm not discounting that clinically we have to do things. And if you want to know about some cool tools, look at last week's webinar. We went through all kinds of cool tools that you can use to, to uh, put in your office. UVC lights, HEPA filtration, 
stuff you can do without breaking the bank. Uh, a lot of that stuff was a thousand bucks. Um, you know, uh, not, not, I, I've seen some doctors that send me quotes and it's like a hundred thousand dollars to overhaul their practice. That, that seems a little excessive to me, uh, especially before the requirements and all this stuff come out. But we can take common sense measures that don't break the bank that are super marketable for us to give our patients and our team confidence. If you want your patients and team to come back and you don't want them to stay away, put these steps in place. Go watch last week's webinar. I'm gonna tell you about more of it here. Um, people no longer are gonna assume they're safe. So how can we communicate that effort? That's what this is all about. Tell, you about, tell them about what you're doing and then show them what you're doing. Demonstration is the, the most powerful form that, that that reassurance can take. Just demonstrate it. And that's gonna, be, that's gonna be everything your patients and team need. If you execute on this plan, I think you're gonna have a leg up on all of your competition. Let's talk about the reality with your team. You're gonna have to wait the practice, the people, and the patients, the three Ps of your practice, and it is your job as the owner. So let's put our owner hat on right here. As the owner of your practice, and in many cases, you're an owner operator, right? You're a practicing clinician and you you're, had the owner hat on. You have to have a bias towards the practice. And I'm going to tell you about what that means here in just a few minutes. Uh, I think the thing that isn't being talked about is that we have to take care of the patients. We have to take care of the people, our team. But if we don't take care of the practice and the practice dies, everything dies. And I think we need to look at this with a real business sense. The longer you go without reopening, the greater the chance that you will not reopen. And if you do reopen, the harder the uphill climb is gonna be. Like it or not, my opinion is the first mover advantage is in full swing. Those practices that open up sooner, I'm not saying be first out of the gate. Let's not be on the bloody cutting edge and, and get a black, get a, a bloody nose out of the out of it for whatever reason. Uh, but those doctors and practices that are able to mitigate these risks and open up sooner are going to acquire significant market share. I've talked about this on past webinars with emergencies. Booming, booming emergencies in many cities. We're hearing from hundreds of patients across hundreds of market areas. They can't find a dentist that's open. They're calling our practices and saying, I've called 15 practices. You're the first one that's actually answered the phone. And this is widespread. Uh, those that are prepared for this new world are going to capture the lion's share of all those patients. Um, let's talk about your team. I've put a really stark bullet point on here uh, because I want to make sure that this is understood because I don't hear this being talked about anywhere. If you reopen your practice and you offer employment to your team and they refuse to come back, they no longer are eligible for unemployment. Unemployment is not a voluntary choice not to work. Unemployment is a safety net for those that you know get fired or have turnover or whatever it is to to help those that need the helping uh if you voluntarily choose not to come back to work uh i want to talk about that in just a second uh, i recognize that it's going to be hard to get the staff back to reopen the practice uh, team members are going to have safety concerns Team members are going to have an opportunity to get a lot of unemployment by not working. And of course, there's always the, the X factor of childcare. God, what, what a mess with the childcare system and the school system right now. We got, I got three kids, all seven and under, and it's like a whirlwind here in the house. And I understand. Uh, uh, I want to talk about the bigger concern that I see. And that is what I'm going to call kind of the me versus we attitude of the team members if they're hoping to stay on unemployment. Now, if you've taken the right steps towards your team's safety, 
your team may be having uh, an irrational concern about their safety. 100% safe is never going to happen. Nobody's 100% safe today. Nobody was 100% safe three months ago. 100% safety is never going to happen. Always and never, never happen. Uh, the opportunity to get your staff back is to go through this safety and security plan and realize, you have to realize, it's their decision if they want to come back. If you want your staff to come back more than they do, you've lost. You can't want it worse than they do. They have to come back. You do have a legal obligation. I'm no attorney or CPA. I'm just speaking from a business sense. You have a legal obligation to report to unemployment if you have a team member that is refusing to come back. They are choosing not to work. If you don't report that and the team member themselves have a duty to report that, if they don't report that, there's a five letter word that that's called. It starts with an F, it's called fraud. It, unemployment voluntarily, you're not eligible for. You can't just, you can't quit your job and go get unemployment. That's not how this works. Um, your staff needs to realize there's a couple paradigm shifts in the market right now. If they choose not to come back to work, they're gonna join the 25 million people that are unemployed right now. Their likelihood of getting another job is very slim right now. And their likelihood of getting another job and making the same money they do today is even slimmer. You've got to be prepared. I'm not saying you need to like it. I'm not saying you need to hope for it, but you should be prepared to lose a few of your staff. And you need to have an A player hiring system in place. Any hope you have to slingshot out of this shutdown is going to be drastically hindered if you feel handcuffed by your team. And I got to say, I think if there's any team members on here tonight, I think it's really short sighted to turn down your job and it's about to create a lot of long term pain for you. The job market is going to be an absolute bloodbath. There's going to be abundance of A players out there, tons of talent to choose from. Salaries are coming down. They're not coming down yet because this thing's going to take time to play out. Three to six months, 12 months from now, salaries for teams are going to be depressed. They're coming down from where they are. If you want to see, uh, I gave a presentation a couple weeks ago on difficult conversations. Uh, you can get that in our resource center. I'll send out the link afterwards. Your job as the owner is to create the safety and security plan for your team. How are you going to bring back your A players? Now, when I say A players, I've heard A players are hard to find, or I've heard from some doctors that, man, if they hire four people, they end up firing two people. It's really hard to find good people. Anybody out there ever said something like that? Man, it's really hard to find good people. Raise your hand if you've heard that before. Lots of hands. Yes. Love it. Oh, man, this might be more hands raised than, than before. Uh, finding great, great people is really, really hard. Um, we have an A player hiring system that is second to none. And I want to suggest, and I, I've, I've talked with my dad, Dr. Ron, about this at length several times. Um, if in your practice, you see that, let me give you a symptom. You're trying to hire one person and you end up hiring three people in a row because you had to fire two of them after two or three or four weeks. If that situation is familiar to you, I want to suggest that maybe your hiring system or your hiring process is a little bit too subjective, or maybe you don't have a system, or maybe your job posting needs tuned up to attract the right kinds of people, right? Maybe there's not the right amount of energy or clarity to the prospects out there uh, that gave them the certainty that you had the place they wanted to apply to. And that A player hiring system is gonna fix that for you. I wanna make sure when you bring back your staff that you're doing it profitably. Generally accepted, all in, 25% of your collections should go to labor. Uh, Dr. Mike Abernathy had a fantastic write-up a couple weeks ago. Happy to forward it to anybody. Just shoot me an email. 
around comp plans coming out of this, how to comp your staff and how to navigate these comp waters uh, when you're gonna have some fluctuations in your collections as you come out of this thing. When, you, when it becomes time to reopen your practice, I think it's really important that you have a sit down meeting or a face to face virtual meeting and you lay out everything. Lay out all the safety as much as possible. Open up the floor for discussion and make sure you're answering everything with your team, openly and honestly. I'll say it again. Uh, I've said it before, this has been my theme. 2020 is gonna be the year that people, that dentists start working on their practice instead of in it. Because in order to thrive coming out of this, the systems and the processes of the business of dentistry are gonna to have to be in place. Uh, I know before this, everybody was running around uh, doing dentistry 24 seven, slammed busy. And it's gonna be a different paradigm when this thing opens back up. Uh, 2020 is gonna be the year that this happens. And if you shut down your practice and shut everything down, you've got more of an uphill battle coming out of this than those guys that didn't. Our 20, uh, 2008 recession data shows that practices that shut down had six months longer of 38% lower collections. The ADA released 75% of dental practices that declined from 08 to 2012. Uh, bounced back from one to two percent a year on average until 2014. Practices that don't streamline their systems are going to end up with lower production and revenue, I don't know, indefinitely? I, I, don't, I don't have certainty around when this thing's going to rebound, but I know if you're not focused on the practices and the systems, this is what's going to happen, and it's going to come in a number of flavors. You're going to have significant patient attrition. There's going to be new regulations, new PPE requirements, Unemployment is going to be way up. There's going to be patient financial challenges. Who knows what's going to happen with dental insurers? I, I don't like to speculate. Warren Buffett had a great quote about people that speculate on interest rates. And I think to speculate on what dental insurance companies are going to do is probably about, uh, about the same. Uh, that says a lot about a person. Navigating this by yourself, my, my view is if you're a solo practitioner, uh, or you've got a couple practices or a few doctors working for you, navigating this by yourself is going to be immensely painful. The, the best thing if you want to go far is surrounding yourself with really smart people who are going to help you work through these challenges. And that's one of the things I'm going to put in front of you tonight is we're opening up a really, really smart brain trust of people for motivated doctors and practice owners. Like I said before, once these reimbursements come down, I, I don't see them bouncing back up. The scale and scope of this crisis may be greater than 2008, but one singular thing remains very true. The owners and the doctors that were thoughtful and prudent with running their practices prior to these events have a significant advantage over those who ignored the rules of financial gravity. This is this is a Keith Cunningham quote. He's a really smart guy. Financial gravity is, is what we're all dealing with right now. The exact same thing is true 10 years ago as it is today. Those owners and practices that are thoughtful are gonna have that first mover advantage. For those docs and owners that have already made the commitment that they're gonna slingshot out of this thing, we're gonna be opening up our Smartbox Roundtable waiting list tonight to join our exclusive group of leading innovative and, innovative and smart dentists that are focused on tackling all these challenges. Let's think of it as the easy button. Here in a bit, I'm gonna send you a link and you can check it out if you want. If it's right for you, great. I'm gonna give you a lot of content between now and then and show you behind the scenes what we're doing. Uh, the challenges you face right now are extremely vast. I've talked about them. I don't feel like I need to repeat insurances and reimbursements and PPE, patient attrition, unemployment. And to top that all off, most markets are gonna start opening up in two to four weeks. There's not a huge runway on this thing. This thing is gonna be coming and it's coming pretty fast. The investment that we're gonna have in this group is gonna be nominal compared to the value that we're gonna create. 
with these practices that we're going to be helping them survive and reopen and thrive during this crazy time that we're facing. And I think for you to shoulder this by yourself is pretty ridiculous. We're going to be opening up the waiting list and it's going to be by application only uh, if you have interest in that here in a little bit. And whether you're a current Smartbox client or not, you've never seen this information before that we're about to go through. This is behind the scenes stuff that we've been working on for several years with some of our top dentists around the country. And we're gonna be rolling this out tonight. So I think there's a couple realities that you have that your patients face and you face as it pertains to your patients right now. Pinup demand isn't likely to exist. Uh, patients, I think, are gonna be pushing out and canceling their appointments. Uh, we have to ask ourselves if we're ready to practice what we've preached during this crucial time. Every dentist I've talked to for the last 10 years has told me that one of the marketable attri attributes for their practice is they take great care of their patients and they help their patient understand the oral systemic connection and patients with gum disease are twice as likely to suffer heart disease and 95% of Americans who have periodontal disease also have diabetes and oh my gosh, I mean, oral bacteria has been found to cause stillbirth. All these connections and links with oral health has been all the rave for the last 10 or 15 years. Yet, I'm hearing from a lot of dentists that they're not going to open back up and continue to help their patients. And I see that as a little bit of a conflict of interest. Given, assuming, before you, you crucify me, let me tell you a little bit more. If we can overcome the PPE challenges, which we can, and we can open our practices back up in a safe way and realize there's never going to be 100% certainty. Realize the purpose of flattening the curve was never to prevent everybody from getting infected. The principle of flatten the curve was saying everybody is going to be infected. And we're simply trying to spread the curve out so that we don't overwhelm the hospitals all at once. And this thing has morphed into, oh my gosh, we've got to quarantine not only the sick, but the healthy, which we've never done in the history of the world, by the way because you may get the coronavirus. That was never the intention of the flatten the curve. And your obligation to your patients to continue helping them and improve their life and ensuring that their systemic inflammatory markers are low and keeping them healthy, in my opinion, is a significant obligation that you undertake. And you also are gonna have patients that have emergencies that have active decay and infections, and maybe you're doing emergencies, maybe you're not. Maybe you're sending those somewhere else. And putting off these routine procedures and this routine care is gonna create more issues for your patients. I mean, what this is going to create dental cripples. I talked about uh, deep disability dentistry uh, many years ago when we first started working with implant doctors and these patients that were edentulous, and what do you need to do? And this is what this is gonna create. Now we talked earlier about the three parts of the practice, the practice, the people, and the patients. I wanna dive in and talk about the specific strategies around each of these. Are you guys okay with that? Are you okay if I move forward and, and really get into some of these specific strategies? Do you have questions now? Raise your hand if you wanna move forward. Drop a question in if you want to ask a question here at this point. Okay, over, oh gosh. Okay, new record for most hands raised. Okay, we're gonna move ahead then. So let's talk about this. I wanna talk about what we call a practice growth system. And I know some of you that have been around uh, the block a little bit, you've been clients or you followed us for a while, you've heard this term. But maybe it wasn't explained and it wasn't, shown as clearly as I'm going to show it to you tonight. To grow your practice, to have a system that's designed to grow your practice, you've got to focus on the three elements, practice, patience, and people. 
And each of these three parts is critical to achieving real success in your practice. Now, I talked earlier that you have to wait as the owner, you have to wait the practice a little bit more significantly because if the practice dies, the patients die and the people die too. You, you can't service your patients and you can't uh, grow your people and provide them a livelihood if the practice is bankrupt or doesn't exist, right? That's what I mean by that. So you've got to weight the practice a little bit higher than the rest and ensure if you've got a dinner table, the practice is eating first, right? When you can synchronize, that's the goal of this. And you can get these three elements synchronized. You're gonna create the successful dentist in the middle. Now, I use the term successful dentist. This means different things to everybody. For some people, this just means enjoyment in life and low drama. Uh, some people, it's wealth and status. Some people, it's family and free time. Uh, to some people, it's being able to be a, have an impact on their community and give back. Uh, whatever that means to you, if you have these three parts in sync, success on your terms is going to be able to be achieved. But what happens when any of these three things are missing, or as we've seen in some cases, maybe two of these pieces are missing, right? Or if you're a startup, you might not have any of these three pieces and, and things are really wonky, right? And that's, that's really the struggle with startups is getting these three pieces and juggling three balls all at once. So what's this look like? What if the practice is missing? Oftentimes, when the practice foundation is missing, I hear, I just need more new patients. Now, I'm not saying that's the exclusive reason that I hear, I just need more new patients. But when the practice foundation is missing, I often hear, I just don't have enough new patients, Colin. If I just had more new patients, I'd solve all my problems. And what that really boils down to is it's a lack of understanding about the numbers of the practice. Oftentimes, when the foundation is not in place, there's no dashboards, there's no metrics. We lost an NBA icon a, a, a month and a half ago, Kobe Bryant. Uh, Kobe was a legend. He gave tremendously back to his community. He was a superb human being. He, I think I just heard he got nominated into the Hall of Fame. Uh, Kobe died because his pilot flew a helicopter in the fog with no dials or dashboards. If Kobe's pilot had had a little gauge that said mountain approaching, it's likely Kobe would have been alive. Uh, if you're flying your practice blind, you take the same risk. And oftentimes the first indicator we have that something is wrong with our practice if we don't have dials and dashboards is cash. Cash runs low. Now, when the elements of the practice are missing, it often manifests that way. Low profit, low cash, every dime is getting squeezed. Uh, maybe you've had to pony up the cash uh, to make payroll or to pay bills. Um, maybe you're not sure where to start, what's costing you so much more than it seems like it used to. Uh, you've got to have dials around the critical elements that are going to drive success in your practice. And uh, realize that while each of these three areas, you as the doctor slash owner are responsible for, you are uniquely responsible for the practice. Here's why. You are solely responsible for the practice. Your dental practice is your game. You are the creator of your game. You create all the rules. If you don't like how the game is being played, it's your duty to change the rules so that you're winning. You get to set the rules. So let's make damn sure we win at the game we're playing where we get to create the rules. The practice is all about setting the rules and defining what the game is. And that's why when there's low profits or low cash, practice foundational issues always fall back on leadership's shoulders. It's always a leadership uh, issue that causes the foundational practice issues. That, again, like I said a hundred times tonight, this isn't judgmental. 
There's no, uh, this isn't about right and wrong. My goal is to give you guys the tools that allow you to build up your practice and grow this foundation so that you can go forth and prosper. And when the practice foundation doesn't exist, this is typically what the cause is. Now, what if the people are missing? What if you got a great practice foundation in place and you got great patients, but you just don't have the right people in your practice? You have a lack of A players. Uh, maybe your team's not performing or maybe you've got some cultural issues that you're dealing with. Maybe um, you're dealing with accountability issues. Nobody is accountable for things that you think somebody needs to be accountable and responsible for. Anybody ever had that conversation with a team member? You're supposed to be owning this and you're, you're not, you're not. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. You're supposed to be accountable for this and you're not. Maybe you're constantly cleaning up other people's messes in your office and God, maybe worst case drama. I, I am allergic to drama uh, or even in the worst drama, you get into high drama situations, you get into cultural toxicity. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Cultural toxicity is one of the worst things you can deal with in any business. Uh, anytime there's drama or there's a cultural issue, and we've all had them, nobody can say they've never had them. If I'm talking with my leadership team, I have a little, a little uh, uh, skit that I go through. And anytime they're telling me about some drama or some toxicity or some kind of crap that's happening, I ask them, how much do they want to take out of their budget? What check do they want to write? And what I'm really telling them is drama and toxicity and accountability cost a lot of money. And it's just like the Lee Iacocca story. You're going to sign a check one way or the other. I prefer to sign a check that doesn't involve drama and toxicity. But if you allow that into your practice, you are also signing a different check and it's gonna cost you a lot more money, right? Ultimately, this is gonna drive low morale within your team and A players aren't gonna hang around. If you've had trouble with staff members leaving and disengaging and quitting and turnover, lack of A players and people problems always lead to lower revenues and lower profits. Now, let's talk about the patients. What if you have a great practice, great people, but something's wrong with the patients? Well, this often manifests itself. You have high cancellation rates, high no-show rates. Uh, you might have what I call the patient value roller coaster. Uh, anybody ever feel like they're working just as hard month to month, they're seeing just as many patients, and have just as many new patients, yet one month they're dealing with a shortage and they got to put money into the practice, and the next month they've got a surplus and they're making money hand over fist. Anybody ever had that happen? Yeah, a few people. Yeah, yeah, more. Love it. Uh, this is what I call the patient value roller coaster. And many times this is driven by. Uh, a roller coaster of your average patient value. If you don't have a dial around your patient visit value or your average visit value or your lifetime value, I don't care what average you want to look at, pick one and look at it. Uh, it's going to open your eyes for why this happens. Um, this is often, the patients are often the final place you want to look in your practice, but it's often the place that we look at first, right? If we just had more new patients. The reality is most practices never get the foundation in place. They never have the solid A players on their team. And then they're trying to push the rock uphill by just getting more new patients. And when you have the first two components in place, this thing is easy. This thing hums like a well-oiled machine. Practices that don't have the right patients, oftentimes you'll see cancellation and no-show rates that are in the 10 to 15% range. Um, that's a major, major issue. I saw a doctor in Chicago a couple months ago that had a 24% no-show and cancellation rate. And he wondered where his money was going. And once we got the dashboards and the dials set up, he looked at me and he said, oh my God, I, I had no idea. I mean, I knew I had a problem here, but I didn't have a strategy to fix it. And I didn't know 
where I was at to, to hold my staff accountable and measure this thing. Uh, if you're reliant upon insurance reimbursements and you're constantly battling getting paid and what the write-off of the day is going to be, uh, I want to suggest that now with unemployment going through the roof and, and, and insurance rates going down and likely reimbursement rates equally going down, this is a great time to consider a fee-for-service transition. A transition is not today I do insurance and tomorrow I don't. That's not how a transition works. We've got to play the old Indiana Jones with the bag of sand and, and flip this thing over a period of time. And when you're able to attract, you'll find in your practice that you can attract the right patients and it costs you 60 to 80% less than you're giving to the insurance companies. The insurance write-off game of taking 20 or 30% off the top is a hell of a lot more expensive than just attracting the right patients to start with and paying five or six or 8% in an aggressively growing practice to attract the right kinds of patients. Uh, that's, that's where the secret lies in highly successful practices is they get off these roller coasters and especially now more than ever, transitioning towards a sustainable practice model. When you can sync up these three elements, you're gonna create your own version of the success. And here's the reality. You may be an all-star at two of these. You may have one area that needs a major overhaul. Maybe you've got two areas that needs a little tweaking. Maybe you've got two areas that needs overhaul. Um, and what you'll find is that as these issues overlap, just like in a Venn diagram, overlap creates all kinds of different colors. If you start to overlap some people problems with some patient problems, this thing starts to get real hairy and it starts to get hard to distinguish what the real problem is. And the, the, the value you, to solve a problem, you guys know this from diagnosing your patients. You gotta break down the problem. You gotta break this thing apart and you have to look at the individual elements that are contributing to all the symptoms. This is the same way in your practice. Being able to focus in and diagnose the right problem is the key to solving it, right? It's often difficult when you're in the practice 24 seven to kind of see the forest for the tree, so to speak. Let me show you a little bit more about the strategies in each circle so you can kind of understand the direction that we're going with this thing. The practice elements, the foundation of the practice, this thing is focused on laying the groundwork so that you can ensure that your people and your patients are supported. Just as if you have a house and the foundation crumbles, everything crumbles, you lose it all. You can't have people on your team and patients that you're serving if you don't have a strong foundation underneath of it. The core principle that we teach and we stand by is the money funnel. And the money funnel is gonna show you the five major places that you need to be focused on to see where's your money leaking out at. You've gotta have dashboards monitoring these five areas. And training and holding your team accountable to each of these five metrics. As you begin to focus and increase the, uh, the focus around each of these five A's, the five A's are what we call them. I'll tell you what they are here in just a couple minutes. Uh, those areas, as you make incremental changes, this is the magic in the five A's in the money funnel. If you can take each of these five stages and you can increase this stage 10% and this stage 10% and this stage 10%, you can double the money in your bank account. And this isn't voodoo math, this isn't spreadsheet management where you give an Excel spreadsheet and a directive to your team and say, go do it. And then tomorrow your team has a coup d'etat and they revolt against you and there's all this drama. That, that's not the way we do this. Uh, you've got to lead your team by combining the marketing and the training and the management. And when you can combine those three things, that's when you start to really hum. If you're a current client of ours, you've already seen some of this. Uh, I'm about to show you the next iteration of the practice growth system. And this thing goes way beyond just the practice elements that you've already been using in your practice. 
Uh, many practices I know have a lot of goals or they have some goals, uh, but many of those practices in the 90% range don't know what they're gonna do to get there. Let me give you an example. I know a lot of million dollar practices that say their goal for this year is 1.3 million. And when I ask them how they're gonna get there, they just say, we're gonna do it. They say, well, we're gonna get more new patients. We're gonna spend more on marketing. Okay, those are one or two little levers that you can pull. And getting more new patients is often an expensive lever in some cases. It, this is coming from a marketing guy, right? Uh, your team doesn't know any more than you do about how they need to go hit their goals. And if you don't have the plan and the strategy broken down and how you're gonna go do it, I'm gonna bet the house that you don't go do it. And that doesn't mean you don't really wanna do it. It just means we have to be really intentional about the actions we take. And I'm gonna talk more about that here in three slides in order to get the result that we want. Doing the same thing and expecting different results is insanity. It's what Einstein said. And we plan practices in 90 day sprints. It's highly, highly effective to focus on three months at a time and break this thing down. I've said 100 times in the past two months, to overcome the shutdown, you've got to increase your collections 15 to 20% over the next four to six months. If you want to make the same money you did last year. If you don't, and you want to look in the mirror and say, I'm okay making a lot less money this year, then that's your decision. And just be honest with yourself about it. That's not judgmental from me. I'm just asking you to be honest. Don't think you're going to make the same money if you don't do something different. If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. And you've got to create the profit in order to reinvest in your team, to reinvest in your practice, uh, to expand or buy new equipment. All that stuff comes from profit. If you don't have profit, you're not paying yourself. You're not having the free time and family time that you're looking for. All this stuff, profit is not some evil capitalistic concept. Profit is required to do those five things. If you want to grow and invest and buy new equipment and expand and have the freedom to do what you want to do in your life, profit is the fuel you need to do that. Let's talk about the people. The people in your practice, the, your team, they're focused on building what we call the team-driven practice. This is a group of highly motivated, highly accountable, driving towards the shared vision and goals that you have. And I use that shared word very intentionally. Nothing is more important than having A players right now. Bench strength is critical if you want to survive coming out of this. You're not gonna survive coming out of this if you have B players on your bench. What's your process for driving success across your people? Here's some questions to ask yourself. What's your team huddle process? What data are you leaning on to drive your focus and your results? What dashboards are you looking at daily, monthly, weekly even, right? How are you hiring and retaining your A players? There's gonna be an abundance of A players coming out of this thing. How are you gonna maximize your team and do it profitably at a sustainable level at 25 or 30% so you can compensate your A players greatly because we wanna retain them and we also wanna make sure that we're maximizing the profit coming out of the practice so we can reinvest in the community, in our practice and in ourselves and in our team. The reality is if you're 30 to 35% of your collection goes to labor, you're a little overweight. If you're 35 or 40 or 45% of your collections goes to labor, you're in the obese category. And that's something that, uh, again, you run your practice how you wanna run it. I'm only gonna give you the data and the opinion that I have. And then you gotta look in the mirror and go do it. And this isn't my practice. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm just going to give you the view of how we've seen it and are seeing it done very successfully in 49 states right now across the country. I'm still looking for a client in Alaska uh, because I'd love to go up there and work one. Of, those of you, you know, I love Alaska. Anyway, we're not going to get talking about Alaska again tonight. Uh, if you don't run a lean team, 
you're not going to be able to comp your A players enough, and you're going to have churn. And you know churn's expensive. Uh, you're also dipping into the profits of the practice, and you're not going to have the cash to reinvest. Or, as we're seeing right now, a lot of businesses don't have enough cash on the sidelines to carry them during bad times. Let's talk about Richard Branson. He's worth $5 billion, and he's trying to loan against his private Necker Island because he has no cash. The owner of the Houston Rockets has been turned down by all the major banks to get a loan. He's trying to raise $250 million, and he's willing to pay 15% interest. And he's circulating a private memo right now to try to raise $250 million to get him through the next three months. These guys that we thought had all the money in the world, turns out they couldn't survive a two to three month shutdown. And I don't say that meaning that this hasn't been extremely difficult, but my outlook on the world is if you got $5 billion, you're, you're drinking margaritas on the peach during this thing, not uh, scrambling because you have no money on the sidelines. And that's a really, really painful and expensive problem. Um, if you've had more than 5% annually of your team churn out, you may want to focus on your hiring and your retention systems. If you've said to yourself, man, great people are just really hard to find and I go through a few, I'm gonna suggest that you look at an A player recruiting system. The problem is not necessarily in the people. The problem is that the systems are often too subjective and they're not evaluating people based on the cultural fit and the performance goals in your practice. Uh, we had a client join in Georgia uh, last week, and he talked about his need for understanding the system and not piecemealing all this stuff together. And I think that when, he, when I was talking to him about that, that made a lot of sense. Uh, and we've talked about the system for a long time, but you've got, just as the people, the practice, and the patients overlap, you've got to have a cohesive system that holds this thing together. The patients, let's talk about the patients. Everybody loves talking about the patients. This is the funnest part of the practice because this is where you really get to serve people and help them with their problems. And all the, the foundational stuff you've built really starts to shine and your results start multiplying up. I talked earlier about attracting the right kinds of patients, which is absolutely critical. When you get the wrong patients, a few things happen. The cancellations and no-shows for one. You might have super nice people. If, if you don't have a system that prioritizes your patients into ABC buckets, you're losing a lot of money in your hygiene department. If, you're pre, if you have no available appointments for the next three weeks in your hygiene appointment, you're leaving a boatload of money on the table, ten dollars to $20,000 a month. And this is all stuff we talk about in, in some of the material that that uh, uh, we're releasing the data, the trainings and everything. Cancellations and no-shows are super, super expensive. Uh, we need to look at which patients are most likely to accept treatment coming out of this crisis. Who better to put in our chair than patients that have an unscheduled treatment plan and in the past have accepted over 80% of the treatment we've proposed? That's a winning combination. If you had a list of your patients right now that had uh, unspent insurance benefits and they had unscheduled treatment, that would be a great list to have. What about patients that historically have accepted over 80% of the treatment that we've put in front of them and are under 60 years old? That'd be a great list to have. If I had a dental practice, I would love to have that data. And that's the kind of data that we give to our practices through our analytics software. Uh, I think it's very, very likely hygiene is going to be down in many market areas. Or if it's not down, you're going to have a surge, and then that surge is going to dry up, and it's going to be down. How are you going to prioritize the restorative treatment to offset the hygiene losses? And how are you going to fill your restorative schedule if you're reliant upon your hygiene department and your hygiene is dried up, how are you gonna put patients in the chair that you know we're gonna accept treatment 
so you can shore up your finances for a few months after you reopen. And you're not going to get on this average patient value roller coaster. We don't want to get on the roller coaster coming out of this thing. That, that would be catastrophic. Uh, and, and what I mean by the roller coaster is oftentimes you're seeing just as many new patients, you're working just as many hours, paying just the same amount of payroll, except your collections just does this. And there never seems to be enough at the end of the month. You got to get off the roller coaster. The five A's in the money funnel will show you how to do that. Uh, we had another doctor in Indianapolis join a couple weeks ago. And he said he had a Swiss cheese schedule, I call it. Holes all over the schedule. Small case sizes coming in. And he understands that there's not going to be pinup demand when he reopens. And those holes in his schedule, in his schedule combined with lack of pinup demand is going to mean he needs to be very proactive with scheduling quality patients that are looking for implants and cosmetics and uh, other elective case procedures. Uh, I think that's going to be very critical as, you, as we all come out of this thing. I think the reality is, as we're coming out of this, uh, there's going to be one thing that holds fundamentally true, and that is that as this tide goes out, we're going to see who's been swimming naked. There's abundance of business owners and dentists and doctors and optometrists across the board that have not prepared for this thing to reopen. They've not adapted to the world. And when the tide goes out and business opens up, we're going to see who's out there skinny dipping. Here we are shut down right now. Today, we're shut down or you're doing emergencies only and you've got some portion of your revenue coming in reopen is approaching you very very fast very fast as of today richard branson is no longer a billionaire and that happened in two weeks as i said a few minutes ago richard's looking for a lender to give him money to loan on his private island it's the last asset he has that's unencumbered oil for may is at negative 37 dollars a barrel in my lifetime I'd never dreamed something like this would happen. And the owner of the Houston Rockets, who's one of Forbes 400 richest Americans, is offering 15% interest to raise $250 million. He's circulating a private memo, and he's even willing to let you take the first month's 15% out of the capital contribution that you write to him. So if you have a high, high appetite for risk, and you got a minimum of a million dollars on the sideline and you want to make 15% on it with a very high appetite for risk that you may never get it back, I, I can forward you his private memo that's been circulating. Uh, I think there's a, a possibility that a lot of workers aren't going back to work because they're making more money on unemployment and they're going to be very short-sighted about their future. Let me ask you a question. I think this is the most important question of tonight. What decisions could you have made nine to 12 months ago that would mitigate the pain that you're now suffering? Everything in the chat box is private. I'd love for you to chat me now and tell me, could, in a, in a, in a coulda, shoulda, woulda world, right? What decisions could you have made nine to 12 months ago that would mitigate the pain that you're now suffering? I'd love if you chatted me. Yeah, I got, some, got a few coming in here already. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to talk about if, if you send me some private stuff. I, that's just for my eyes. I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, yeah, yeah, great. Um, what decisions could you have made nine to 12 months ago that would mitigate the pain that you're now suffering? And if you don't want to chat it, think about it. Write it down on a little sticky note. Write it down on a piece of paper. Type it into an email that you send to yourself. I do that all the time when I need a note, a reminder. If you don't design your practice going forward to accommodate situations like this, we talked a little bit earlier, the glass ceiling on these shutdowns has been broken. These stay-at-home orders, this stuff is very likely to reoccur in the future. Uh, Forbes had an article this week that said the winter outbreak of this may be more severe than what we're going through now. Depending on your market area 
and and the peak of this thing and what we figure out vaccines are 12 to 18 months away um, this thing is going to have a resurgence in some market areas later this year so let me ask you a different question what decisions should you be making today if you believe what i've just told you what decisions should you be making today to accommodate nine to 12 months from now? We've all read the news. We've all seen that business can be shut down nationwide. We've all read the articles about reopening too soon and I, I'm not gonna get into the politics of all that. Uh, I have beliefs, you have beliefs, what they say about opinions, right? Everybody has one. I, I, all, all the opinions, what I think doesn't matter. What you think, I'm gonna suggest that what you think also doesn't matter on the topic. The only thing that matters is what you're gonna do about it. The problem is not the virus or Wall Street's reaction or the shutdown orders. The problem to solve is what you're gonna do about it. So. If you're looking back and you're saying nine to 12 months ago, I could have had more savings. I could have not built that new office. I could have had more cash. I could have diversified. I could have, could have, could have, could have, right? All these things we could have done. If you're reading the same news I am and you're seeing this thing coming down the tracks six, nine, 12, 15, 18 months from now, I think even if there's a vaccine in 18 months, are we gonna have herd immunity? I, I don't think so. I think it's unlikely. Is this thing gonna morph? Are we gonna have an influenza type deal where this thing changes every year and we never really have an effective vaccine against it? I, I don't know. Again, I'm gonna suggest my opinion doesn't matter. I, I'm gonna say, my, I know my opinion doesn't matter because all I can do, what I think is gonna happen or what I think about the future is irrelevant to how I'm preparing my business and my practice to shoulder the burden that we're gonna to have to carry in the future. So if we would have made different decisions in the past and we know it's gonna rehappen again in the future, and even if you think it's not gonna rehappen again in the future, recessions are, cycl are cyclical. Uh, we're always gonna have a recession in the future, right? How, how are we gonna have a very small productive lean team so that we can be very nimble and very quick on our feet. Knowing all this, what decisions are you making today to accommodate nine to 12 months from now? I think a very relevant quote, and we've all heard this. Everybody, if anybody tells me they haven't heard this, you must be living under a rock. I say that lovingly. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And I, I think that is a great quote to live by with this COVID crisis. We all got fooled once and shame on that virus for doing that to us. But if we get fooled again, shame on us. Shame on us for not preparing for what we knew was going to happen. We're going to open up our roundtable waiting list tonight. If you are interested if surrounding yourself with a group of like-minded, innovative, motivated people that are navigating through this crisis uh, together interest you, we're opening up our waiting list by application only. Application does not guarantee admission. We turn away more people than we accept. Uh, and there are criteria. We're looking for minimum million dollar to million and a half dollar practices. I give a range because every practice and every situation and growth curves are a little different. This is not a group for startups. Uh, this, is not, this is not focused. This is focused around building a brain trust of like-minded dentists where you can have open and honest conversations uh, that are moderated by me and one of my other key employees that's brilliant. If you've heard David and you've seen some of the stuff he's doing with practices, uh, then you know what I'm talking about. But this is a, uh, an innovative and highly 
uh, successful doctors group uh, that, that we're looking to put together, that we're opening up for a waiting list and uh, is gonna be open here shortly. You can go to this link uh, and that'll take you to the application. Um, fill out the application and we're planning to get back to everybody uh, within a week or so. Uh, within the next week, we're gonna go through our waiting list and take the best of the best, so to speak. Uh, we don't have unlimited space, right? This is a very small, intimate group. Um, uh, the, the, I wish we, we had space for everybody. I know out of the hundreds of people we have in tier tonight that we're gonna get a significant amount of applications from it. And we're gonna do our best to put together uh, a top tier group of doctors that are looking to not only survive this crisis, but thrive. Uh, if you're tired of being stuck in your practice 24 seven, and you're looking to start working on your practice this year, if you're ready to maximize the practice, the people and the patients to create the bigger and the better future for your team and for yourself, right? This isn't just about making more profit for you. This is also about creating the bigger, better futures for your team and being able to serve your patients and your community in a bigger way. Are you looking to better yourself and invest in yourself and your team by surrounding yourself with the, the high performance, like-minded dentists during this tremendous time of uncertainty? If the answer to that question is no, then you might not be a good fit and that's okay. Uh, we're looking to put in here motivated seekers that have a bias for action. Uh, the application takes about 15 minutes to complete. Um, it's a little bit lengthy, and we, we strongly vet everybody that we accept into the group. Like I said, this, this is not a group. We've got resources that we do for startups. This is not a startup group. We're generally looking for practices that are doing a million and a half and above and are looking to get out of the day-to-day -day and really start focusing on working on the practice rather than in the practice. Um, let me give you some other criteria and you can evaluate if this is the right group from you, for you. If you're looking ahead at 2020 and 2021 and you see very little danger ahead of you, you're looking forward and you're thinking you're just gonna reopen and hunky-dory things are gonna be okay, we, we are not a good fit for you. If you don't see the massive amount of uncertainty and challenges and danger ahead of you, you're not gonna be a good fit in this group because we're gonna be rapidly iterating and solving problems and working through all these issues that are coming at us like a machine gun. And if you're content with where you're at, I'm great with that. I love that for you. Being content is, is a gift. I, I don't have that gift. Uh, some people do and that, probably creates a higher satisfaction of living than some others that work 24 seven. If you're looking ahead and you don't see any danger or uh, threats coming at you, this is not the right group for you. On the flip side of that, if you're looking nine to 12 months out and you don't see any opportunity, equally not, not the right fit. Just like when you're hiring patient, when you're hiring team members, when you're recruiting team members, when you're bringing patients into your practice, this is all about the right fit. If what I've talked about tonight, you're sitting there and you're not sure, it's probably not the right fit. I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm optimizing to have a phenomenal group of like-minded dentists that are going to whip this thing's ass. And if me saying a cuss word two or three times in an evening turns you off, I'm okay with that too. I don't, I, I don't cuss a lot, but I tell you, I sent out an email once and the email was around answer rates, the percentage of doctors that answer their phone calls during the day. Nationally across, I'll tell you the quick story, 9,000 dentists that we benchmarked, the average doctor answers 66% of their phone calls during business hours, right? We benchmarked this. This is we can send you the data. We've got all kinds of reports on it. So I released a report and I called the report, answer your damn phone. And I got more hate mail than you can imagine. 
And I thought it was just a cute little quip, but there were people that said, oh my gosh, Colin, that's the most unprofessional thing I've ever heard. I, I would never work with you and nobody I know would ever work with you. Eh, that's probably not the right fit. Um, if, if a little bit of color in your language turns you off, again, just like your team and just like your patients, we're optimizing for a great, great fit. Like-minded, highly successful, innovative, not startups, and are seeing a significant amount of ever-changing uncertainty and dangers and threats ahead of them, as well as the opportunity to pivot and crush this thing if you do it right. I think that's where, where we're at tonight. And, you know, like I said, when the tide goes out on this thing, when this business uh, environment opens back up, the tidal wave, the tidal wave that we see coming of all the practices, and not just practices, this isn't dental specific. This is industry-wide. Restaurants, gyms, personal trainers, flower shops, small businesses, HVAC contractors, those that didn't prepare, we're gonna see. Uh, this group is open for current clients as well as non-current clients. Whether you're a current client or not, this group is open, properly vetted. Like I said, uh, this is a very small group. We've got a limited number of spots. Um, we're going to uh, put together the best group of like-minded people that we can. And um, we'll get you all the details. I know I'm being intentionally vague only because I don't want to go for three hours tonight and give you all the value and all the details and all of the training curriculum and everything that we're going to do behind this and the the meetings and the cadence and all that stuff. It, if this is the right fit and you know it's the right fit, I would suggest you fill out the application. That'll That'll get you in the queue. We're going to review it and then we'll be in touch with the full details. There's no credit card required to fill out the application. There's no bait and switch here. Uh, I'm just not gonna get into all the details around everything this group's about. If what I've talked about tonight is, is you're sitting there and you're doing this, if you're nodding your head and you think this is right for you, I'd encourage you to go check it out, but I, I'm not gonna give you some hard sales pitch. I'll tell you that, uh, this is probably the only webinar I'm gonna do around opening the waiting list. And I have full confidence that we're gonna fill up the group uh, with the applications that we get in tonight. I'm probably not gonna open this up again for another six to 12 months uh, as practices roll off, as there's transitions or sales. Um, you know, we had a number of practices that we were working with that, that got bought out and get bought out by DSOs every year. Let's talk about that as a threat. Uh, these practices get DSO uh, bought out by DSOs and, and they cycle off. And uh, you know that's been a threat for two or three years. How is the DSO market gonna be affected by the COVID crisis? Let me give you two scenarios. Either they're gonna go into a buying frenzy and they're gonna buy up a bunch of practices for a nickel on a dollar because all these practices are gonna be closed up and doctors are gonna be early retiring, or is private equity gonna dry up and value stability and preservation over growth and the DSOs aren't gonna have the money to gobble up a bunch of practices? I, I think I know the answer. I'm not sure, it's still early, but I think there's two very viable situations that one, this could accelerate, greatly, greatly accelerate the DSO threat, the DSO takeover, and the other knocks this DSO threat right in the nose. I mean, just punches it lights out, almost, and subdues this thing for another three to five years uh, until private equity gets gets a little more confidence and starts throwing money around again. Uh, those are two very viable scenarios. So I, with that said, I'm gonna open this thing up for questions. 
I've done a lot of talking here. There's a boatload of questions in here. So I'm just going to go back to the top and I'm just going to start from the top. Um, what sort of contingency should we consider for a rebound page? Um, I told you at the beginning I was going to answer that. Did that, did that get answered? Or do you feel, you feel good about that? Uh, I think the likelihood that we have a rebound of this virus is incredibly likely. And if you would have made, if you could have made a different decision nine to 12 months ago, I think it would be really, really smart to plan nine to 12 months from now for, for however you need to get the house in order. Um, Dr. Strait, I've applied for every kind of assistance but got nothing. Um, I'd encourage you to reach out to your Chamber of Commerce, Dr. Strait. There are some other funding options. Um, the PPP has it ran out the first round. It got refunded. And from what I'm told, the PPP has run out the second round, even without new applications coming in. That program was doomed from the start. And I think uh, Kane Waters has come out and said nobody should take the PPP money. And those guys at Kane Waters are incredibly bright. But I think the advice what they told doctors early on not to apply for the PPP because there was uncertainty and they didn't know what was going to happen. I think that was galactically stupid. I, those are really, really sharp guys. And I think they missed the mark in a big way on that PPP advice. And I, I, uh, I just very much disagree with some of the narrative around that. The worst case scenario on that PPP is you get a 1%, you get a two year loan at 1% interest. That's your worst case scenario. Holy cow, if, if I don't have any cash on the sidelines and I want to have a little cushion, a 1% interest loan is, is like a gift. It's a gift. And I thought that, I just thought that advice was really bad. Um, yeah, so I'd encourage you to reach out to your Chamber of Commerce. Um, they're going to have some other funding options. Uh, we've got the, down here in Louisville, we've got the Horseshoe Foundation. They are launching a number of grants. Uh, Facebook is also launching a hundred million dollar grant. Um, geez, let's see. Um, Google is also launching a grant program, a credit program. Um, I, I don't know how long those programs are going to last. Here's how I'm thinking about this. I think it's very likely that we had the first round we did of funding. I think it's very likely we had the second round of funding. I think it's pretty likely we'll, we might even have a third round of support funding. I think it's very unlikely we have a 10th round of funding. I, highly, highly unlikely we have an eighth round of funding. I don't know where this thing is going to end in the middle. I don't know how many rounds of funding we're going to go through, but the, the lifespan on free money is very limited. And, um, you know, if you've not gotten any confirmation numbers on that, uh, gosh, I mean, that's, that's tough. I mean, making sure that you balance. I think the key thing we need to think about, we need to think about two things. How do we service the, the patients we have today? And how do we service the revenue those patients are paying us today? And if your practice maybe got a little, a little bloated, and it happens, right? It, 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 it's a normal thing. As we grow, often our expenses grow. And what we want to keep optics on is that our expenses, our expense growth doesn't outpace our profit growth. If our profits are growing at 2% a month and our expenses are growing at 2% a month, then we're realistically not making any more money. We're making the same amount of money for working a lot harder. So what we need to make sure we do is that our profits grow at whatever the number is. I'm just making numbers up. If your profits are growing at 2% a month, you wanna make sure expenses grow at 1% a month. And making sure that your practice is set up. The advice I've given on the PPP is to run your practice as if you don't have it. Uh, and, and that's general, general advice. I know every situation is different. 
Some people have laid everybody off. Some people have everybody still on the payroll. I, I can't speak to every individual situation here tonight. But generally speaking, the PPP is a lifeline to keep business alive. Uh, and I think it should be remind, remembered that that is the case. If the government wanted people to have the money, they would have wrote them a bigger check directly. But they didn't. They gave it to small business because they saw the value in a lifeline to small business. Dr. Mark, how much damage do you think was done to us that our profession was considered non-essential? I think that was a tremendous amount of damage. Uh, I think it was very short-sighted. I think it was uh, a terrible, terrible designation, um, but it is what it is. And what I think just doesn't matter on it. Uh, how are you gonna move forward and help your patients out of this uh, and how are you going to be the expert for your patients and be the rock for your team as you're building your practice back up after that is, I think, the most important question that we've got to answer here. Christine, yeah, the 10 questions will be available. Um, Anonymous, my state association has been able to purchase masks to distribute 10 per, per team member. Um, I've not been able to obtain these masks from anyone. I am working uh, on a source right now made in the USA for face masks and face shields. Uh, I don't have details on it right now, uh, but I am deep in the weeds on putting this thing together. And uh, I, I don't know if we're going to pull it off, um, but, but we're going to make a real pass at getting some supplies. We've already found face shields. We've got a couple distributors that can get these things for a few bucks a piece that are, they're, they're reusable. You can clean them and, and they're super cheap and they're, they're nice and they're durable. So I'm going to have more forthcoming on that. Uh, it, you know, if you're on our list, if you're in our uh, smart box round table group, you're going to get first run at that stuff. If you're a client, you're going to get first run. If you're watching our Wednesday webinar and you're not a client, you'll hear about it uh, on the webinar as well. Adriana, why did I say, Patients under 60, implant patients willing to pay more. Uh, yeah, I think it all depends on um, if you're an implant practice, I would recommend not focusing on under 60. Uh, a lot of the implant practices that we work with, it's the old, like you say, it's the over 60 demographic, Adriana. Uh, a lot of them are pulling for their, from their 401k to pay for these. And uh, yeah, if, if that is your bread and butter, and you're set up to do that deep disability implant all on four, all on six, like my dad is, that, that's exactly what you gotta go do. It, some doctors don't have that clinical training and they're not looking for that. So under 60 are some of the risk guidelines that the CDC has put out for uh, those less impacted by the coronavirus. That's why I answered that there. Uh, Let's see, Delta Dental is offering $200 million to its member dentist. What a change for Delta Dental. Glad to see them doing right by the private fee-for-service dentist. Uh, I love hearing that page. I'm not gonna hold my breath. I, I'm not holding my breath that Delta is gonna swoop in white knight and save the private practice dentist. Um, Dr. Cousy, yeah, if you're an existing client, uh, this is completely separate from everything we're doing on, at, at the, on the, the Success Academy and the agency side. This is the, the round table. So if you're interested in this, uh, drop into this link and uh, it'll take you straight to the application. It'll take you about 15 minutes to, to fill out. Uh, what about the EDL loans? Yeah, the EDL loans are still funded from what I'm understanding, from what I'm reading. Uh, you don't get any forgiveness with the EDL loans, though. Um, you do get. Uh, of course, you can get a loan when you can't get money elsewhere, but, um, you know, that, that is just kind of the weighing the PPP. The PPP was like a gift compared to EDL. It was, it, it was a gratuitous contribution to people's businesses. And, um, you know, I, I, I regret that there was bad advice in the dental marketplace uh, from some guys that I have a lot of respect for, a lot of respect. Uh, and they have, they're super sharp, but man, I, I think they missed the bus. I really think they missed the bus. Uh, Dr. Howard, what's the protocol if an employee gets COVID once we reopen? Uh, 
Part of that is in the patient security and team safety plan, Dr. Howard. Uh, you've got to make sure you're taking the temperatures of everybody every morning. Testing, if you want to do testing, uh, you can do that. We have a lot of practices that are only doing PPE and temperature checks. The testing is pretty unreliable right now, but um, if you have access to that uh, and you've already, some practices have already purchased a bunch of that, I think you ought to be given a test to every, every uh, staff once a week or every morning, depending on your supply. Um, I, I think it was very, very noble that a lot of dentists donated their PPE at the outset of this crisis. I think if the truth was told, a lot of those dentists now that can't get PPE regret donating it. And I say this because I've had some private conversations with some of these guys. Um, I, I think it's going to be really important to be judicious about your supplies, about cleaning the supplies. There's an N95 mask sterilizer. If you were on here last week and you saw me talking about an N95 mask sterilizer unit, uh, we were going to make a pass. I had about 60 people interested in buying them. And the manufacturer told me, you're, you're too small of a fish. And I said, okay, then I, I hope these guys buy it elsewhere. Uh, you can call up your Patterson rep or your local equipment rep. Uh, CPAC, C-P-A-C, makes an N95 mask sterilizer. And after this coronavirus crisis is over, for 300 bucks, you can change it into a sterilizer unit that goes up to 350 degrees. Uh, it's a tremendous little unit. I, I suggest you check it out. Um, Delta is only advancing a portion of the payments you will get in the next year. They're not giving us anything but an advance from what I understand. Yeah, I, that doesn't surprise me. Um, like I said, I'm not holding my breath on a lot from Delta. Uh, I, I'm sure they'll do some goodwill stuff to look good, but I mean, Delta and all the insurance companies haven't done a whole lot for the, the private practice. I, I don't see that changing. Um, would you close and quarantine? Howard, if, if you have a person test positive, they need to quarantine. We don't need to quarantine the healthy. Um, disinfect everything ensure everything's clean and uh you know move on uh would be my advice there uh anonymous i got 10k from an edel but haven't heard anything back any idea what might be going on uh yeah the edels are taking a lot longer because they're directly through the sba where you could get the ppp through thousands of institutions the edel loans are completely backlogged right now in the sba uh dr Cousy, what do you think of adding a ppe fee I've already started charging patients 10 bucks. Um, I, my thoughts, and, and it, I think it depends on your practice, I'm gonna give general advice, is I would rather see the PPE cost value added into the overall fees rather than separate it out. Uh, I, I think it's kind of the Amazon value principle. Let's just do free shipping to everybody and we don't itemize out shipping. If you want a box of Kleenex, it's four bucks, and that comes with free shipping. I gravitate towards that model more. I don't think one's right or wrong, um, but that's, that's what I've gravitated towards. Anonymous, UVC, uh, if you want to check out last week, I talked about the Remy Halos and the scrubber units that you can put in your HVAC system. Kills 99.999% .999 of everything, and they're about 800 bucks installed. Uh, I think that would be uh, a great thing to, to check out. Uh, Evan, um, yep, I'll, uh, Evan, if you're looking, if you're wanting to talk about the, the marketing and the team training side, uh, that would be something Ashley can help you with, and I can certainly get you connected with her. If you're looking at the roundtable stuff that I'm talking about tonight, uh, you just need to pop into this link here and fill out the ap application. Uh, and we'll get you in the queue. And, and uh, like I said, uh, we're application only. We've only got a few spots open right now and we're gonna be filling them up and this is gonna be uh, a tremendous group going forward. Uh, let's go to the other here. Let's see. Uh, what other questions do we have? 
Um, Tanya, I didn't get instructions on how to get signed in. I'm assuming you're talking about the vault, uh, our vault of, of access and information. Tanya, if you'll shoot me an email, um, I'll be glad to get that resolved for you. I don't know, you might check your spam, uh, but um, yeah. Uh, Carrie, just curious, do you really believe patients coming out of this crisis are gonna be looking for cosmetic implants and elective treatment? when they have financially challenged due to the virus, lost their job, maybe lost their insurance, lost their 401k money over the last few months. Carrie, I think you're gonna get what you put into this. I think right now we have implant doctors and I can count them on more than two hands, Carrie, that have more surgery that they can do in the next three months right now. We have doctors that have been doing virtual consults and in office consults, in some cases, during this shutdown, no surgery, taking full deposits up front for all on four, all on sixes, uh, you know, uh, multi-unit implant dentistry, saying, we're going to do the surgery as soon as we open up. We are not seeing elective dentistry slow down whatsoever. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a little blip at some point. But these practices that were cranking on implants and, and highly elective stuff before, those markets, and we saw it in the 2008 recession, they are not impacted by recessions and crises as general hygiene bread and butter stuff are. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to challenge your assumptions on that. I can tell from how you've written your question how, what you believe. Um, and I don't, I don't think you're right or wrong. I don't feel like I'm right or wrong. I'm just giving you the information that I see. And I think all of these problems that you've listed here, Carrie, all of these problems are not one problem. Uh, financially challenged is a problem. Implant and elective treatment is a problem. Lost their job and insurance is a problem. Uh, their 401k money down is a problem. And just as you help your patients, when a patient presents with pain, and an abscess or whatever it is, maybe they got a, a failed root canal and they got a crown that's cracked and they got an abscess on another tooth and they present and they say, man, this hurts like hell. Your job is to break this problem down and figure it out so you can fix them. And I think, I think uh, that would be a great exercise for you to look at with all these different problems you're listing out here is that you got to break those apart. This is not one problem. And if you're looking at it as one problem, um, I think it was Henry Ford that said, if you, whether you believe it's right or whether you believe it's going to happen or not, you're probably right. What, what you believe is probably what's going to become true for your reality. And if that's what you believe, I, I think that's probably going to be your next 12 months. Um, yeah, keeping C team members. Uh, got 15 team members, too fat. Yeah, C team members, no bueno. Um, this is not even an environment for B team. Now realize a lot of B team players can be elevated to A team players, to A players. Oftentimes, C players cannot. Uh, C players, oftentimes, it's kind of like the one degree of separation. A players aligned, B players here, C players way out here. And oftentimes, we can't realign C players, right? That just is what it is. Um, Galaxy S10, I lost my key hygienist. Yeah, why did you, why did you lose your, key, your, your hygienist, just out of curiosity? Um, gosh, a lot of people in here are talking about various cash problems, a lot of money problems. I'm not going to talk specific names here. Diversification more cash on the sidelines, smaller team. All these things are great ideas. Reduce expenses, pay cash, don't get leveraged up. Don't be Richard Branson and have the world thinking there's a difference between significance and success. And this crisis has shown us that Richard Branson, Richard Branson sought significance and not success. Here he is. Everything he owns is crumbled in front of him. And he's begging the UK 
He, he realized he's a, he's a resident of Necker Island and he saved hundreds of millions of dollars over the past 20 years to not be a resident of any country. And now as his empire is crumbling, oh, save me, save me. I, I think that's a load. I think it's a load of crap. Uh, Tanya, my email, Colin R at smartboxdental.com. Colin R at smartboxdental.com. Yeah, shoot me that email. Uh, create systems, efficiencies, trained employees, accountable. That, that's the name of the game. The doctors that make those changes now are going to be the ones that pull out of this uh, and slingshot out of this uh, with the quickness. Uh, anonymous, can I afford to see new patients at this time? They just want a treatment plan. I, I think you need to prioritize and, and, and break apart these patients that you're seeing. Um, there's, there's a, just as there's A players in your practice, there's A player patients. There's B patients and there's C patients. If you got patients that in the last 12 months, they've no-showed to two or more appointments or they've canceled within 24 hours, those are C players. And you ought to treat C players see patients the same way you treat C players in your practice. So anonymous, uh, the, the secret here is in the data. It's in prioritizing who is most likely to accept, who's got the most unscheduled treatment. If you have some good insurance networks you're in network with, who's got a, a chunk of insurance money that they're looking to spend, who are low risk patients under 60? Um, who is fee for service? And when they come in, they're, they're not thinking, is my insurance gonna cover this? If, if they're thinking, if the mindset is, is my insurance gonna cover this? I'm not so concerned with patients that have or don't have dental insurance. A lot of patients have dental insurance. A lot of patients that we see in our implant uh, practices, they've got insurance, but they don't have the mindset of, will my insurance cover this? Um, Galaxy, tried to talk to hygienist, complained she talked too much and padded hours, and she ran the whole office, didn't know this, now she left. Cannot find any hygienist now, none in my area. Galaxy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, suggest you might have dodged a bullet here. If this hygienist, nobody liked her, and she ran the office, and she talked too much and padded her hours, you, you my friend, have dodged a huge bullet. And um, there is going to be a lot of hygienists available. There's going to be a lot of assistance. There's going to be A players everywhere. Um, the, the magic in this is having the right recruiting and hiring system. And it, when you can create the right culture, you're gonna attract the right A players. Um, if you've had trouble finding them in the past, uh, I, I don't know where you're at. If you wanna tell me what city you're in, here's where I'm going with this. If you're in the middle of South Dakota, there truly may be no other hygienist available in your market area. If you're anywhere else in the country, there's gonna be a lot of hygienists available. Milwaukee, there's a lot of hygienists available. That's a big city. Uh, it may have been tight and all the job markets were tight leading up to this. The paradigm has shifted. Uh, the employees had a, a lot of control to command the salary and the jobs they wanted before this crisis. Coming out of this crisis is going to be like coming out of the recession. When unemployment is up, the employer has more power, right? And when, when unemployment is down, the employee has more power. All right, um, let's see, do you have the hiring? Yeah, the A player hiring system is all part of, uh, that is one of the, if you're a current client or you're in our round table group, our A player hiring system, our insurance independence guide are all things that, that we provide to our, our dentist. We've also got a ton of other resources. If you go to our website, uh, you can, here, let me, let me show this here. Let me, let me hop on. Uh, Let me hop over here. I told you at the beginning I was going to do this. So let me hop over here. If you go to our website, smartboxdental.com, right? And you click here at the top, watch this week survive and thrive. 
Uh, scroll down here. We've got all the states and when they're reopening right here. We're gonna be updating this thing every day or two. Uh, we've got all the webinars we've put on. If you want a masterclass for free around what you need to be doing, you need to watch these six webinars. You've already watched tonight. You need to watch these six. If you don't watch these six, uh, you do so at your own peril. And then if you scroll down here, you can see our complete repository of tools, articles, and resources. If you click this link, you're gonna get everything we have to offer in here, right? Our, our marketing maximizers, our success academy workbooks. This is stuff we provide for free. This is available if you're a client or if you're not a client. You click into this stuff and you get instant access. You, we got a doctor track, we got a team member track. You don't even have to put in your email. This stuff's available right here. Uh, a 42 page guide for doctors and equally for team members around the five A's. Here's how this works. If you want to do it yourself, we make this available to you. If you want us to do it for you, we offer expanded enhanced services where we work with you one-on-one -on -one to get your, your practice and your patients in order. If you're interested in being around a very, very high performing level of like-minded dentist, we've got our Smartbox Roundtable, which is what we're talking about tonight. And if that Smartbox Roundtable is right for you, that link I sent a few minutes ago will take you right here to this application. There's five steps to the application. It'll take you about 15 minutes uh, to, to punch in here and, um, and get this thing filled out. It's gonna be run on a, uh, a uh, as um, first come first serve basis. Um, as I talked about a few minutes ago, we've got criteria for this group. No startups. We've got stuff we do with startups. This isn't one of them. It's for doctors that see a tremendous amount of opportunity as well as a tremendous amount of danger and uncertainty ahead of them. If you're sitting there thinking this is gonna be a cakewalk and you're gonna reopen, um, this isn't for you. I'll tell you right now, don't waste your time. That, that you're not gonna be happy. You're gonna come check this out and look at it and you're gonna waste your time and you're gonna waste our time. And I, I'd love to chat with you and help you, but I don't, I don't wanna waste anybody's time. So that's why I'm giving you this info up front. If you want to figure out what you need to do in your practice and what other dentists around the country are doing right now in our elite group of the practice, the patients and the people to get this Venn diagram humming like a finely tuned machine, what they're doing to build a bigger and better future, how are they reinvesting in, their cell, in themselves, what's working, what's going on. Um, uh, this, this is the group that we're, we're putting together and we have put together high performance, like-minded dentist. And if you don't have a bias for action, it's probably not for you. I think that's the biggest thing. And that's why I talked about earlier in the night, you know, uh, a million to a million and a half is kind of the minimum. Uh, there can be a range here because it all depends. Uh, if you've started up, uh, if you've bought an existing practice doing a million and you want to go to 2 million next year and you're on a great growth trajectory, that's going to be something that we really want to have as a part of our group because we love working with high growth practices. Uh, if you're just content at a million dollars and you're just wanting to hum along and make a few tweaks and do the same thing you did last year, that's not a good fit. So we take all this into account and there's going to be an area on the application we ask you, hey, what, what are you wanting to do? What is the opportunity you see in front of you? What's the danger you see in front of you, right? What could you have done nine to 12 months ago to make a difference right now? Now, equally, if we're saying, you know, the economy is gonna be locked back up in nine to 12 more months, what decisions are you gonna to make today? that's going to change your trajectory. If you do nothing different, you're gonna get exactly what you've got right now. And for the doctors we're working with, they're wanting to make more money this year than they did last year. Because that means more reinvestment in their practice, more comp for their team, more freedom, uh, more reinvestment to buy new equipment, 
to market more, to grow faster, to help their patients in better ways. That's what profit ultimately does. Profit's not about greed. It's about having the ability to reinvest in yourself and in your team and it back into your patients to continue giving back to your community, continue giving back to those that have helped you get to where you're at, right? What other questions do we got here? Um, it's like I don't have any new questions since I started my, uh, let's see, let me double check here. So yeah, this is, this is where I, I see things at right now. The likelihood that we go back into uh, another period of lockdown, I think is very high. I think making the decisions today um, is gonna be really important. Um, nine to 12 months from now, I think it's really, really important to have that plan in place now. 2020, when this tide goes out, we're gonna see who's naked and they're gonna be standing out for everybody to see. And that's, that's my opinion. That's how I'm looking at this. Um, hey, Kuzi, let's connect offline and chat about that a little bit. Uh, I, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but let me look into it and we can chat offline. If you wanna shoot me an email with some more information, I'm happy to chat with you about that. Yeah, shoot me, shoot me over some the your uh, that direct mail stuff, and, and we'll take a look at that and see see kind of what you're what you're doing there. Let me get up to speed on it if you if you would allow me. Awesome. Uh, if we have no more questions, uh, we're gonna look at closing this. Here's the link. I'm gonna send this out in an email here shortly. Uh, a bunch of you have already applied. Uh, as I said earlier, I'm not expecting to open this thing back up a second round. Um, I think we're probably very likely to fill up our group based on what we have here right now. So if you are interested in getting in, uh, tonight is the opportunity. And again, there's no obligation. I'm going to get you guys the full details out once we get through and find the right fit and the right uh, uh, opportunity for everybody that submitted an application. Um, but I just want to be clear that um, uh, this is a limited group. Uh, we're not fitting everybody into these rooms, and this isn't going to be a packed seminar with a bunch of people in the room. Um, so uh, love having everybody here. I'll see you again next Wednesday. Awesome. Neil. Yeah. Shoot me an email. Colin R at smartboxdental.com. Here, I'll put everybody seems to here. Let me type my email in here real quick in the chat box. That's my email. If you want to connect with me, shoot me an email there uh, and we will get um, I'll get whatever if it's uh, uh, connecting with you or a specific question or problem. Um, happy to chat through it with you. Also, if you are looking for a link to the application, I just dropped that into the chat box there. Uh, if you're looking to apply to this group and are interested in it, if you have more questions, I'd encourage you just to fill out the application and then we'll have an opportunity to go through all the details and all the questions. Uh, but jump in line, grab a spot, and uh, I'll see you guys on the other side. So as always, keep moving forward. Take care.